three days of excitement, fun, frolic, frivolity, and all the things you would expect from a convention, some of which we had play out last week, which is what we want to talk about with Alan Kelly. Alan, of course, plays to run.com, the CEO of Playmaker Systems, the man who started it all and has his periodic table of elements. And we talk each week, although this week we're changing the schedule a little bit. And uh, Alan, thanks for popping in for the show today. Good morning, Tim. So, first of all, uh, you write about last week the Pinocchios. Um, <laughs> that's not a play, though, right? <laughs> yeah, we wrote, wrote about the uh, Pinocchio uh, tendency syndrome, right? The BTS, uh, right, yeah. Well, what we're trying to get at is, is that uh, the, there, there's, a, there's a play that's being run uh, by both parties. I mean, it's, it's endemic uh, to the political process, and it's very, it's very much in the middle of our spectrum of 24 options of, of influence stratagems, and it's simply called the filter. And uh, it's interesting, you know, um, you know, POTUS X, Sirius XM talks about unfiltered. Well, that's the point is that as you as you listen to almost anybody's speech, whether it was Christie or the weather was even Ann Romney, they're actively editing out um, information that they don't want and actively editing in, if you will, information that they do. Uh, and so uh, and this is what happens is that they they get so interested in doing that and they're so obsessed with being on script that they ultimately become unbelievable yeah and uh so i think the filter play is you know which is very very prevalent in so far as we can tell in our system kind of like nitrogen or hydrogen if you will it is always everywhere to filter out it's sort of the human it's more condition. Like carbon. well no I'm, i don't think so carbon <laughs> is really not actually that prevalent but uh not like nitrogen but um but i think that you know that is that's one of the the things that I think the Democrats have an opportunity uh, to get around is because the uh, the RNC convention in Tampa was just so highly scripted, so highly controlled that it ultimately lacked authenticity authenticity because there was too much the the play they're, they're running the filter was in fact too abundant. You you make a great point because you know I was, I was sitting there one night with Julie Mason and and we were thinking about the fact that Newt Gingrich probably one of the more exciting speakers for Republicans yeah he can be a little bit uh, off the reservation once in a while but you imagine him and he was out there with Callista totally scripted and there was nothing no reaction to it the the moment that got the most reaction last week frankly was the one that was the most unscripted and that was the Clint Eastwood performance speech whatever you want to call it and I'm not sure that fits anywhere into the playbook Alan. Oh, it does because the the, the play that uh, Clint Eastwood was running was was very much a very a high engagement play. Again, just a mini tutorial here. The the spectrum of plays that we have here go from very low engagement, from assessing to very high engagement, and, and way to the right. Um, along with you know things like your favorite play, uh, Tim, the Crazy Ivan and the Bait Crazy and things Ivan. like that, is a play mm-hmm. simply called the Peacock. You know, and the Peacock is like Oprah Winfrey giving away, tw- you know, 276 cars to her shock studio audience. It is, it's, it's uh, Clint Eastwood coming up there with an empty chair and riffing, um, uh, not necessarily elegantly, um, but doing something spontaneous and different. And, uh, and that's what Peacocks are all about. They're the strutting of a novelty. Well, I, well, teach me, though, is it, it, I, w- I was thinking it would have been a play if it had been his intent to go ahead and do that, but... Or if it had been the Romney camp's intent, in other words, I don't know that his playbook was consistent with the Romney playbook. I guess is one of my qu- questions about that. Well, who can know? Um, but <laughs> but the but the effect um, of the, okay. the, the underlying strategy that 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 took flight there, ha ha, you know, was the peacock. <laughs> I don't think peacocks can even fly. But uh, but you know, he was he was stunting. He was bringing in a novelty to sort of uh, drive in and, and create uh, sort of some sort of spontaneous notoriety. Now everybody felt, oh, that's uh, you know, Dan Balls, for instance, uh, you know, said, oh, it's not not, not good to, to be off script, and um, and uh, and many people felt that it was distracting to Mitt Romney. But I'm thinking, distracting from what? He is not a compelling speaker. It is not mm-hmm. a particularly. Uh, I mean, it's very level set it's very you know it's it's a very good republican event what we're listening to well clint eastwood brought novelty to it he brought interest to it and i don't see anything bad about that he brought context where context was so devoid with all these filters going on that we're discussing he sort of broke through that um he so, brought energy to the room too i can yes. tell you from from when i was sitting there that it was one of the best received moments of anybody on the stage when when Republicans were speaking. And, and to your point, Alan Kelly, uh, this was not scripted, and that's what makes it in some ways more special. So you think that 
despite some, I guess, mainstream or, or maybe, you know, the, the conventional wisdom that this distracted from the message that Mitt Romney was trying to deliver and what Republicans were delivering in the campaign, this actually worked to their advantage. Yes, but now I have, now, now I'm going to throw in the big asterisk. <laughs> the problem, uh, okay. I, think, I think by and large it absolutely was successful okay. uh, because it makes it memorable. The problem, though, is that the Romney campaign clearly did not know how to and I'll just use the musical and the musician's concept of riffing. They did not know how to improvise off of Eastwood's improv. Mm -hmm. And Romney, for instance, the morning uh, after it went on, uh, I think it was CBS Morning, um, and and she said, oh, well, yes, uh, we certainly thank Mr. Uh, Eastwood for his excellent comments. Well, no, no, no. I mean, the, the play that she should have run in her oh-so-nice way is, hell, yeah, you know, Clint, Clint Eastwood made my day. Right. I mean, they did, and and... And, and use those words exactly. Yes, would, exactly. Great, well, no, she point. couldn't have. But in her own style and her own way, she should have. Uh, the play that she should have run is what we mm -hmm. call a bear hug. She should have, uh, you know, squeezed the life out of that and embraced it, endorsed it. Mitt Romney had to have known. Uh, he did know. Uh, you know what what he was following, and he could have um, inserted some sort of reference again to use it rather than, than to ignore it because to ignore Clint Eastwood is uh, Eastwood was became the event. So mm -hmm. you can't be so arrogant as to think that you're the event when something better just happened. So they don't, and this is what we've, we've talked about so many times over the last few weeks, is that the Romney campaign is, their strategy signature is so focused and so narrow that they lack an ability to improvise and to mm -hmm. recognize when they've got to riff. They're not agile. No. They're, yeah. Now, you could say they're very, very disciplined, and that may be their strong suit. There's much to be said about that. Sure. But we're going to watch now, going into this week in, uh, in Charlotte, uh, a, a, another player or, or team um, that is, we know, remarkably more diverse, that can go very much to the, 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 the low engagement assessing plays to the very, very uh, high engagement peacock-oriented plays. This is a much more uh, facile unit we're about to see. Let's let's lay this out a little bit for this week. Alan Kelly again is with us, uh, CEO, founder, of Playmaker Systems, plays to run dot com. That is P L A Y S, the numeral. Two I have to correct you, Jim. Com. It's Playmaker Systems. We have a new website. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> okay, Playmaker Systems. Um, laying it out though, I mean, I'm hearing a lot this week that this is going to be a week of plays like callouts. This is going to be an aggressive. Uh, going right at the Republicans. And I wonder if you were advising from a strategic standpoint this week, number one, how, and I'm not asking for political strategy only, I'm just saying, and how would you do it? Would you, would you let the surrogates, they're the ones who make the attacks, the president then comes out on Thursday and gives his much more sweeping, inclusive, uh, visionary message that he would deliver to America so that here's why I should be the president. Let all those other guys do the, the, the jabs, if you will, and he can do the knockout blow with not necessarily a punch, but rather uh, one kind of a, a speech that would sort of harken back to what he did in 2008. I like what they're doing. I, I really can't say that uh, I, I would give them advice to do anything differently, but I, I can maybe describe what I think is going to happen here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear from you. They are certainly being challenged to explain the great question of, you know, are you better off now than now than four years ago, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I think they're, they're finding their voice on that. And, um, and the play that they're going to run, rather than the Republican-esque filter, if you will, just talk about what they only want to talk about mm -hmm. is that they're going to they're they're going to use a play that we call a mirror and it's just a name to to describe the strategy of when you hold up evidence to say one two three four five how do you deal with that and you started to hear that from joe biden yesterday well you know we killed osama bin laden we saved general motors that's a mirror how do you deal with that so i think whether it's surrogates or even obama himself we're going to see um, uh, Democrats hold up a lot of evidence of a situation and of a president who has excelled in that situation, whether it's a problem he dealt with or an opportunity that he, uh, that, that he strove for. You know, whether it was Osama bin Laden and, and the crisis on Wall Street or whether or not it was uh, the Affordable Health Care Act. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that what we're certainly bound to see uh, from... Barack Obama himself is this signature ability um, to preempt a point of view, to talk about what politicians would generally not think they should talk about. Um, you know, we, we've seen him do this um, 
Historically, I think he'll do it more and more. He'll continue to talk about something that's embarrassment. He'll say, Obamacare. You know what? I like Obamacare because mm-hmm. I'm Obama and I care. He um, has said that. And he has said that, uh, and he's used that exactly what you're saying about Mitt yeah. Romney saying Romney doesn't care. Yeah. Now, Romney, for instance, uh, you know, we're starting to see Romney and Ryan attempt to glue um, Barack Obama to Jimmy Carter uh, for all sorts of clever reasons. Uh, well, I wouldn't be surprised that Barack Obama stands up and literally puts his arm around Jimmy Carter. Now, that's not, you wouldn't think that's such a wise thing to do, but what it does is it allows Barack Obama and Axelrod and company to sort of control the rate of burn of that of that problematic uh, connection that the Republicans are attempting to make to him. And so while he's got his arm draped around Jimmy Carter, maybe figuratively or actually speaking, what he'll say is, and I'd like to introduce another friend of mine, an income on his other hand, on our arm will be Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's the association, obviously, that he wants to make. This is, you know, and, and you know, Joe Biden is probably going to walk up or somebody like Joe Biden is going to walk up and um and cutely bring with them an empty chair and you'll know it's coming it's a, it's it'll be a riff or some sort of satire on, can i make a suggestion yeah, yeah. i was going to suggest and i was just saying to some people i thought it would be funny and this had nothing to do with political strategy if somebody brought up two chairs and what they would say this is for the <laughs> mitt romney who's in favor of health care in massachusetts and this is for the mitt romney who hates health care and wants to repeal obamacare yeah this is for the mitt romney that was going to be more uh, tolerant of gay marriage than Ted Kennedy when he ran for Senate. And this is the one who thinks that same-sex marriage is an abomination. Uh, in other words, use that to riff on the two Mitt Romneys. Maybe that's way too complex. I but someone it, will bring up the chair, you're saying, and, Tim, and maybe that'll happen. It's brilliant, Tim. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> I live for your comments. For <laughs> but that's what I mean. It's it's preemptive. It's, is that we, we're, sure. dealing, we're dealing with a group that strategically is so much broader Um and, uh, and tactically, they're just more agile. They're just they're just yeah. better at it. Yeah, yeah. I think there's also something. Uh, one thing that we really can't ignore is that you know there's always a, uh, especially among like say debate coaches, for instance, there's always a big question of should you go first or should you go second. It's my view almost always that you want to go second because you understand then what you're reacting to, and I and I think that they have now a huge advantage um, because the, as someone wrote I think maybe it was Dan Balls they now know uh, what the Republican playbook is so they've had time to to formulate the responses and figure out what plays they want to run to counter and then what plays they want to run to advance their own agenda what is the Republican playbook or I, I haven't figured it out yet exactly <laughs> because well it started by being a, and, and it was going to be a referendum on the economy and it was a referendum on the last four years of President Obama and clearly, several things have happened, including the selection of Paul Ryan to be the vice presidential candidate, which has shifted the conversation to Medicare. And then it's become more a vision of the future. And even Republicans now saying exactly what Democrats wanted this to be eight months ago, which is a choice between alternative A and the known entity, which is President Obama. Trust him more. Trust them less. Don't go back to the past with the Republicans. Stick with the Democrats. We have a vision of the future. And I'm not sure that either one has successfully planted that vision. But I don't know what the Republican playbook is. Maybe you pick it up better well, than I do. You know, there's a difference difference between plays and playbooks. Not to get too wonky here. What I can no, what I can I parse can and, what I can parse and, and and isolate, I think, are the actual stratagems that are occurring as we see them. You know, unless I am inside or you're inside, you know, the actual you know the campaign mechanisms. We can't really know how they're attempting to lay this out. But it does appear generally, certainly, that they're trying to make it all about the economy. Will duh. And uh, and secondly, that they're now trying to press the question of Are you better? off or not um, but I'm not sure they're going to have the success that they may think because they're dealing with as you point out such an agile um, uh, team yeah well we'll see how it works out this week Alan it's always great and uh, I'm really glad we were able to sort of split the difference and I'm be fascinated when we do the post democratic <laughs> yeah, national it will be funny. because well, you know, there's a lot this week about whether or not President Obama is even going to do the Thursday thing at the stadium because of the weather. And I know it seems, you know, what about the weather Thursday? But yes. the conversation has been about the, the thunderstorms we've had. We're supposed to have those this week. And if you get 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon and 30,000 people milling about in that stadium, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable for a lot of people. And I think that's one of the things they're worried about. I, I also, frankly, think that there's a question about whether they're going to get enough people into the stadium. Some people, it's not quite the same as it was four years ago in Denver. Uh, but it remains to be seen. We'll see how that works out. But uh, again, the agility is something 
they're going to have to have some of that this week when it comes to some scheduling and so on. Tim, All right. don't forget to have, get have yourself some barbecue. I'm going to try. I, did, I didn't really get out. I was kind of in a cocoon at the uh, Tampa convention last week, and uh, so we'll see how it works out this week. We've got offerings that are not too far away, and we'll have to avail of ourselves of some of those. Let me remind people, play. it's playmakersystems.com. You have switched the website. We have. Your, your email is still the same. But uh, but uh, playmakers, playmakersystems.com. Very good. Thank you, Tim.